Daniel chapter 6 in your Bible tonight. Well, that's a fun song to sing, isn't it? But it's true. It's true. And Jesus will help. There's never been a time when God has not been of help to anyone who knows Him who is His child. You know, sometimes we can get so far away from the Lord in fellowship and relationship that we begin to believe either our own lie or a lie from Satan, and that is that there is no help in the Lord. You know, that's not true. That's what the enemies of God would have you to believe, is that there's no help for Him in God. But there is help in Jesus, and your solution is to get closer, not further away. You know that uh, sin is never satisfied and never, uh, never brings anything other than disgust and discouragement. Along with that disgust and discouragement, it comes defeat. And as you begin to feel more and more defeated, spiritually speaking, the last thing in the world that you think about doing because you're so illogical at that point is getting close to the Lord and finding forgiveness and help and getting right back in fellowship with your Heavenly Father and, and having the Holy Spirit speak to you. And it's a 100% of the time instant uh, solution to your problem. Get close to the Lord and stay there. And you always can tell Him about it. He knows about it cares. You ever feel shame though sometimes? Just to, man, God, I'm such a failure. I, I, I should... I, I, I shouldn't come back again needing help again. You know, I've warranted out the alternator on my rabbit probably six or seven times now in the battery, three or four times, and sometimes when I go in there to get a new one, I think they're going to they're gonna know that I abuse this thing and not want to warranty it out. I feel ashamed, and so my solution is to go to different auto zones. But, you know, <laughs> the... Uh, well, it's a lifetime guarantee. There's no conditions. It's an unconditional guarantee. You know, fellowship's an unconditional guarantee. You just just go back to the Lord and say, God, when you saved me, you knew what I was. And um, I'm more and more realizing what Christ was. And God will just forgive you and restore you, and it's wonderful. Go to Daniel chapter 6 tonight. Daniel chapter 6. This is, again, this will be one of the last opportunities to look at a story, an application account from the book of Daniel. So Daniel chapter 6 this evening, and we will go to verse 4, and uh, we'll begin reading all the way um, down to verse 9. We'll just pray, and then we'll just pick up as we go through our text this evening. Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find none occasion nor fault, for as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. Then said these men, We shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Then these presidents and princes assembled together to the king and said thus unto him, King Darius, live forever. And all the presidents of the kingdom, the governors and the princes, the counselors and the captains, have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for thirty days, save thee, save of thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of the lions. Of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians which altereth not, wherefore King Darius signed the writing and the decree. Now, um, if you would look at verse 12, and I was going to stop at verse 9, but let's go ahead and come to the point. Then they came near and spake before the king concerning the king's decree. Hast thou not signed a decree that every man that shall ask a petition of any god or man within thirty days, save of thee, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered and said, The thing is true according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which altereth not. Now look at verse 15. Then these men assembled unto the king and said unto the king, Know, O king, that the law of the Medes and Persians is that no decree nor statute which the king establisheth may be changed. Father, help us tonight as we look at the way that the heart of man is and even at the way the the heart of a godly man help us not to see things from the perspective of man only 
but help us to see a God who supersedes in his ways all the ways of men who circumvents in his wisdom all the cunning and devices of men. And help us to come to the conclusion that not only are you a great God, but you are our God. And help us to live accordingly, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. This is a story account in the Scripture. Now the Bible is an interesting book. The accounts of the scripture are fascinating. There's nothing like, uh, nothing fascinating like a miracle, is there? I mean, it's just a miracle gets your attention. Unbelievers uh, and, and weak Christians alike appreciate miracles. And what about individuals that love the Lord and walk closely in fellowship with Him? Well, what I would say about them is that they experience the supernatural hand of God. You stay close to the Lord and you'll see His hand supernaturally in your life. And here is an individual, Daniel, who lives in a time period which is the times of the Gentiles. The times in which Daniel lived, uh, he is a Jew and he's not living in a time in which Jews are exalted, in which godly Jews are being used by the Lord. He is a standalone in his generation with few exceptions there would be a few that would stand the way that Daniel does. And that's a reminder to us at the outset that regardless of the circumstances, regardless of whether things are favorable or things are looking poorly, for those individuals who know and love the Lord, the circumstances really have nothing to do with anything. And Daniel's relationship with the Lord was not circumstantial. It was not a matter of God so long as you are in the position to fulfill your covenants for blessing to the nation of Israel, so long as my people and my nation, which are called by your name, are following you in the way that they ought, then I will follow you as well. Daniel's relationship with the Lord was on a very real basis, more so than we realize. You see, many of the Jews would not have been walking close in fellowship in the, with the Lord. One of the reasons would be, they'd say, God has forgotten Israel. And what they forget is that it really doesn't matter. By the way, that wouldn't have been true, but that would be the accusation. It doesn't matter whether God's forgotten Israel or not. It matters whether or not Israel has forgotten God. You know, many times in our life, our focus is on whether or not circumstances are favorable for us to reward God by having a right relationship with Him, rather than for us to have a right relationship with Him because He's God. And Daniel recognizes that in the universe, there is no God but Jehovah God. That in the world of wickedness and uh, of deceitful men and even a world which to Daniel himself would have been bondage and perhaps frustration. God is God and that's what matters. And I want to remind you this evening that your circumstances aren't what matters. What matters is eternal and that is an eternal God. You see, God is the God of all living. And He's the God of the Gentile nations and He is the God of His people Israel. And it matters not what individual is a king. It matters not what individual is, is either the master or the slave. What matters is who God is. And Daniel's been a standalone through several Gentile empires. Now one of the things we've learned thus far that I think is, is encouraging to us as believers, one of the major events that we've learned so far is that God is not concerned only with small matters. He's concerned not only with Israel. He's concerned with the Gentile nations. Concerned not just with the Gentile nations toward His people, Israel. And so somebody help me with this. What would be the relationship of the Gentile nations, specific, specifically the Babylonian, the Mede, and the Persian empires toward His people, the nation of Israel? What is God's relationship with them? Specifically, how is God using the Gentile nations? To judge, to punish the Israelites. Judgment. And you know, many times what we think is, well, you know, uh, God is just reactive. He's just using the Gentile nations. He's just using them. 
And so I find